Half. Yeah, I mean, there were chances. Um, I had a few chances. I had one in the second half that I should have scored. So, you know, I think we're going to be, um, you know, we're going to want more from, from each other in the final third. And that's something that we're trying to add, um, you know, defensively as a team. We're, we're solid and we're not conceding. But I think, you know, going forward, we're going to want to try and score more goals to, you know, get us these sort of wins. It's nice that you can fall back on a clean sheet. And your goalkeeper contributed to that as well, made a couple of good saves. He did, yeah. Um, we know that when it comes down to it, we can rely on Edu to... You know, then one or two opportunities in the game that he has to concentrate and make a, a vital save for us. We know that he's, he's going to do that for us. It's interesting for Chelsea players at the moment because you have to think on your feet out there because the manager's always changing the system, rotating the squad. It, it challenges you. It is, yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's a good thing when you've got so many, you know, good players in each position that are all ready to play. Um, it just means that during the week, during training, everyone's fighting for that, for that spot. Um, you know, in the starting 11 and, you know, that just challenges all of us to, to push each other to obviously try and, you know, get that start on the weekend. And like I said, that's only a positive thing. Got a draw, but it's, it's very tight up there in that battle for the top four. It's gonna, those, those two points could be costly. Yeah, like you said there, it's, that's why we're disappointed coming away from it. Um, you know, it's very tight between you know, third and eighth. There's not many points. So, you know, these sort of games we want to be winning. And, you know, it's a difficult game away. And if you can't win it, you know, it's, it is a positive that you're not going to lose it either. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. OK, let's get some instant reaction. Here is Thomas Tuchel, the Chelsea boss, talking to Des Kelly. Thomas, uh, 12 games and counting unbeaten, 10 clean sheets, but does that feel a little bit like an opportunity missed today? A little bit, but pitch is super hard to play. And uh, we had a couple of chances to go 1-0 to, to go ahead. And in the end, of course, they, they trouble you, they put pressure on you, and, and the more minutes you need to make a goal, the more they believe is normal. But uh, there were enough chances, yeah. But sometimes it's like this. Uh, we cannot. I don't want to be too too harsh now. It happens sometimes that it's hard to score, that you miss some big chances, then you go out with a zero zero. It's like this. That was the story, wasn't it? Particularly Kai Havertz. It's nothing seems to drop for him, does it? Yeah. At the moment. Yeah. Sometimes it's like this. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as we have chances, as long as we have um, um, a lot of touches in the box, and we don't concede too many chances, the, the results will be there. It's, it's like this. Sometimes we need to accept the result. It's, you changed the system a little bit today, and almost a, a false number nine, I suppose, is the phrase you used. Yeah. Do you think it worked successfully? Yeah, I think he's. He's pretty much a nine. I don't think he's a false number nine. He is a nine because he likes to be in the high position. It's for him not, not always necessary to drop to number 10 in turn. For me, his biggest strength is that he, he loves to be in the high position and then that he loves to arrive in the box and in the, in the, um, in the six yard box even. He loves to be there. He likes to have the, the last touch and that's why it's for me, uh, uh, he can play number nine and he played number nine today. And of course, you've got the foundation of a solid defence, another clean sheet, and your goalkeeper as well today. Did yeah, well. good goalkeeping, good goalkeeping, good defending. Yeah, can always be in trouble. Like I said, the pitch was uh, very difficult to play, very slippery, very, very bouncy. So, of course, it can happen any time. And um, latest games, we, 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 we could block everything, and he did not have to make the biggest saves. Today, he, he saved us also, like that we... That, we, that the task was not even more difficult with one goal behind. And so it was good performance from him and of course gives us confidence to not concede. But the, the boys are disappointed in the dressing room, which is a good sign. We, we draw away, we play a good game, but, but everybody is disappointed. It's good. Thank you very much, Thomas. <laughs> Thanks. And the disappointment really comes because it's so tight towards the top there. He knows that any points dropped in this battle for the top four could cause them a problem. I mean, it's pretty philosophical. You get days like this, you get games like this, and probably another reminder of the fact that a striker in that team today or a striker that is scoring goals at the moment would have made a big difference. Yeah, big difference. And Kai Havertz, he, he did well today. He did OK. His movement was good. The chances fell to him and he... He just, was, he just was a bit unlucky. I think Tuchel was very analytical about it there. But you put a centre forward in this team, and I think it's a different story here. This good movement from him, he gets across just, just that, you know, that instinct of a striker. They'll just be a little bit more sharper there. Here he gets in, ball drops. Well, the, well that one, that was comedy of errors, wasn't it? But this one here, Dan comes inside, lovely ball fed in there, great touch. He hits it well. It's just not quite happening for him. The movements are good, the, the actions are good when he drops in. Listen, he's not a number nine. Here, 
He takes an extra touch too many. It's a good save. Again, this is later on in the game. If that's, even if that's Giroud today, you can, I can only think that he didn't bring Giroud on because he's got the Champions League game in mind. But if that's Giroud there, he, can, he probably buries it. Kai Havertz is a good, a good player, a fantastic player. He just needs to find his feet and it's going to take, it's going to take time. But Chelsea desperately need a number nine to finish with the chances. Everything else was going around. Defensively, they look sound. But it is two points dropped. I, I think, no, Tuchel will be pleased that the chances are coming. They're getting opportunities. Yeah. Yes, they're not being finished. But if you look at Kai Havertz's uh, previous clubs, his fellow um, uh, Leverkusen, he finishes opportunities like that. He gets in positions like that. He's, he, he, he's someone who can put the ball in the back of the net. He can execute. He can finish. So... Getting the opportunities, I think, is the most important thing for, for So would you persevere with him in the false nine for now? Listen, when you outlays as much as it has been for a player like Havertz, huge amount of investment, you've got to persevere. You can't just throw that away and say, oh, cut the games, he hasn't scored a goal. That kind of outlay, you've got to give him an opportunity to keep performing. Yeah, I just question whether, in, in this system, whether the false nine is, is the best for him. I, I, I don't mind him in there. He can do things. He's, he's, sort of, he's floating round. I just think there needs to be a pivot. And when Giroud plays and he takes best, and when Tammy is at, at moments as well, yeah. they, they do that. But we, miss, we missed it today for sure. Because Leeds, we were talking about Leeds before the game. They don't deal with crosses well. And we just didn't get that, that quality. You know, Reese James, oh, the best crosser of the board at the club, he wasn't playing. I think they don't, they don't deal well with set pieces. They don't deal well with crosses. And we just didn't get enough balls into the box and attacking it well enough. And when you both stand here, both before the game and now, saying they need a number nine, if I'm Tammy Abraham, who we believe he's got this sort of recurring issue with his ankle, he's not involved. If I'm him sitting home, I'm thinking, well, I'm here. And if I'm Olivier Giroud, I'm thinking, well, I'm a striker that scored goals at the very yeah. top level. Yeah. You don't think they have already in the squad what they need for next season? Uh, if they want to be Champions League contenders, championship contenders, then Giroud, obviously, when Lefranc was here, now under this management is the same he's been a bit part player and he's his age obviously he's not a young Giroud he's his age now he's at a different stage of his career so I don't expect he expects to play every game I think Tammy will be putting himself in there but again he has to get fit and stay fit but I think the levels at this club at the moment I think I think they'll go into the market to buy a, an out and out number nine Haaland's the one who's everyone's on everyone's uh, lips he's the player in form he's the one that a lot of clubs are sitting there thinking, if we get him, that takes us from being a contender to actually being a real chance of winning, a proper contender, not just someone who's on the edge of it, right in amongst it. How do you see that Chelsea front line looking next season? Because we saw Pulisic playing in a new position yep. today. They've, they've got a lot of brilliant players up there, but they still feel like they're just sorting the jigsaw puzzle out a little well, bit. And, and he's only been in the job five minutes. He's, he's getting to know his players. I mean, Christian Pulisic today played in that right wing back position which I actually think suits him it, it, he gave us width he gave us penetration and what it does is it simplifies the game for him he gets in these positions no one's stopping him in, in that position when he does that and he, he sort of you need to rebuild him you rebuild his confidence at the back end of last season he was Chelsea's best player by a mile he was brilliant he's had his injury troubles and when he plays in there you're just asking him to do what's completely natural for him get, get on your shoulder when you get it, shift it, bang. You know, here it's a lovely. He doesn't quite catch this shot, but he just shifts it there, bang. When he does that, he's, he's a fantastic player. And he, we're rebuilding him. He's a great player. And you, you add Zayic into that. Mount can play there. Havertz can play in them positions. There's an abundance of talent. And, and that's what he done well today as yeah. well. He done the other side of the game well, which shows he's learning, which shows he's buying into the system. He'll be fine. We've got an abundance of talent in that position. And it's just a case of hudson Adoy as well. Just which one? Horses for courses, different matches, different players. A uh, bit of a few strange decisions from Tuchel today when he was bringing on Callum and he seemed to play central for, for, for parts of it. But that is not a problem. It's, the, it's dealing with, with a number nine, getting a regular goal scorer is going to get you 25, 30 goals a season. And you're, you're in the races then. Because they're solid. They're solid at the back. And they've got a big week coming up now. They've got yeah. a Champions League game. They've got an FA Cup game. This is mm. going to be an interesting few days. Yeah, it will be. They've got 10 clean sheets in 12 games. So that tells you that there's something right at the back. That's you would have dined out on in your career. Yeah, oh, You probably did. Beautiful. I mean, Rudiger and, and, and co at the back will be walking yeah. through into the change room saying, we've done our job. And then it's about the domino effect throughout the team, get the confidence further up the pitch so they can start scoring goals. And the platform for any successful team is to have a solid base. And this is, at the moment, is what he's trying to create here. And you can see the runner games there. They're winnable games, all of them games there, you can see. And then it's, it's going to be... It's going to be... He's going to obviously, the season's defined by your results towards this end of the season. I think he's got them in a good position now. 
where he'd be sitting there and I said, we group now. We've Obviously, this is a result we probably should have won. We'd like to have won. We haven't. But they go again. That's yeah. it. It shows you how difficult it is, though, this season particularly. He comes in, 12 games, 10 clean sheets, picking up wins, not conceding goals, and still... There's nothing guaranteed for that top four. Like we said, if the teams buy and win their games, Chelsea is seventh again. No, it's, it, it, we said at the start of the season, didn't we? we said it's going to be the tightest season for everything. And even the relegation battle's tightening up now for them. But at that top end of the season, like you said, if Chelsea, if the, the teams win their game now, it's Chelsea find themselves in seventh, seventh position again, which is incredible considering the, the last 10 games and, and the results and the performances as well. They, they look reborn, they look rejuvenated, the players. They're running, they're working hard. You know, I question, that's another story, where, you know, why that shouldn't have been done in the, the, the previous 10 games. Yeah. But there's a lot of quality in this team. There's a manager who's obviously very smart. And right, Rio said before the game, he's getting the base right. And once the foundations are in place, it's just about sprinkling the players where they need them. And, and, and for me, that's in that number nine. Position. And that's not disrespect to Giroud or Tammy, because I think, I think Tammy's getting better and better and better, and he can be that player. But bring someone in to push him. Giroud's... Like Rio said, he's not going to be able to play every game. He's 34. But I can only think he didn't play tonight But we've, because Tuchel would have been thinking about Wednesday night in mind. That's the only reason. You bring, you bring Today, someone sorry. like... If you bring another striker in, for instance, that's part of being at a top club. It's never, yeah. it's never going to get to a point where, say, for instance, Tammy's sitting there and saying, I'm out right number one and that's it. No one's going to be... You've got to be jostling for positions. I think bringing someone else in only makes someone like Tammy better. Yeah. That mentality that is, you have to have then is that, OK, you've brought someone in, I'm going to show yeah. you. But, and what happens, in, you, you play in all these competitions, you get opportunities. You get opportunities to come in and impact games and become an integral member of this team. Whether you're starting every game or not, the squad wins trophies, not the, not the first 11. Nice. And that's been shown by the goalkeeper. You go and get Eduardo Mendy. And I love the story about not having a club, training on his own, and suddenly ending up at Chelsea playing European football. But he has been, without doubt, a great addition to the squad. Great addition to the squad. And a couple of the saves today were fantastic. Yeah. Lee, this is Leeds' chances, but this is the one I like here, because he just... He floats that ball there. He's stretching all six foot four of him and he just gets it again. Again, he's good positioning here. Ball comes in. And this is just reactions. You know, but that's difference makers. You cannot win. There's no team that's won trophies who's not had a goalkeeper that does things like this. And he's he's brought that calm, you know, he's, we sung his praises when he first came in, and then we took, took him for granted. And today's a little reminder of how good he is and how influential he is on his team. It's a good stat, that, isn't it? I think when you've when you've kept more clean sheets than you've conceded goals, you know you're having a good time as a goalkeeper. Yeah, definitely. And what that does, I talk about it from a defender's perspective, that just confidence just flies throughout the team then. When you can look back behind you and think, well, if I make a mistake, I still there's still one person behind me I can, I can lean on to get me a save and pull me out of, out of a bad situation. And he does that. I think he's got a real commanding presence. With his feet, I think he will improve, and he needs to. But everything else in terms of goalkeeper saving yeah. the ball, which is the most important thing, I think he's very sound. Well, look, the Chelsea defence have had plenty of praise from you two today. We should certainly do the same to Leeds as well because they were excellent, particularly at the back today. I think there weren't many chances in the game. Tried to press them high up the pitch and try to make it hard for them. And uh, they're not like, but they're not. I think we've done that. Broke the press a few times, but not many chances, I don't think, for both teams. And then, like, if you look at the chances, then like, our chance is probably the best chance in the game where Rafa on other days probably should score it. But yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, there were chances. Again, in the first half, and the keeper kept him out well. It seems to not fall right for either side today. Yeah, um, yeah, it didn't look like, but didn't look like, I think it was one of them games where there weren't many clear cut chances. Didn't look like, I think each team got into some good positions, but maybe that final pass or that. That final ball behind him, a few slips at vital moments and stuff. So yeah, just a real sloppy game from both teams, but then like a good point for us. The loss of Bamford affect your plan, your game plan today, obviously. Uh, no, they're not. Like not really. They're not. Like us boys played the same way. They're not. Like whoever's in the team. So then like we are set up for the like players to come in and out. And so no, they're not. They're not. They're not. Not really. Then like of course he's our top goal scorer. So then like that's. Then like. 14 goals out of our team, but then uh, like we'll back our players to come in and score goals. And talking about players, the season's going fine, really, mid table and that, but with the, with the injured players returning now, looking like they are, although Bamford is aside, yeah. I mean, that, does that give you some hope? Yeah, but then like we, 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 we then had, then not like quite a few injuries, but then not, like, but then like, I think that's the same for every team. They're not like it's been a long, 
probably say two years, didn't it? like because we didn't have much of a pre-season or anything. So it's been a long couple of years, so a few injuries, but that's normal for every team. Thank you very much, Luke. Cheers. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well played that man today. Look, if Leeds can get themselves a top half finish this season, that is going to be some return to the Premier League. Bearing in mind how quick the turnaround was from that sort of delayed finish to the championship season. Oh, it'd be huge. That'd be an unbelievable result for them. Um, listen, I think the people that run the club, the manager, the players, they'd have been happy staying up 100%. Get out of the championship. The, 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 they've been out in the wilderness for, for, for a long time. To get here and stay here, and now they can start building on that, that'll be fantastic for them. That's what's going to be exciting, actually. They've got Angus Kinnear at the top who makes really strong decisions from a sort of non-footballing side obviously Marcelo Bielsa we all know what he brings here but to see this team making just the right steps in the right direction after this summer let's see what Leeds can do back in the Premier League next season yeah and also hopefully like you said before Jake with crowd with the crowd back in oh. here that's another five six seven points on the total just staying in the league as an achievement if they was to finish mid-table but also doing it with a style of football you know we know Bielsa we know what he what he can bring but the net the future's bright for Leeds they just need to like always be mindful of how where they was when Rio was in this in the side just before he left and that fell to bits quickly so they just need to make good decisions in the in the transfer market back this man back his judgment and we're gonna have a lot of exciting nights here coming to watch them because they are a, a real high tariff exciting vibrant attacking team what did Bielsa say in his press conference this week I can see myself being at Leeds forever. I mean, if you're a Leeds fan, that is what you want to hear from him, right? Yeah, and I think the Leeds fans would love to be able to be here and witness his energy on the touchlines, um, the, the, the team's energy, what they bring to the games. And when I spoke to Bamford, this, uh, Patrick Bamford this week, one of the things he spoke about was the difference that the fans would have made here. Yeah. There's games he's even picking out, the nil-nil draw here with Arsenal. He said, we probably would have won that game. They'd have got us over the line. They'd get that little extra little bit out of uh, the individuals and the team as a collective. So the team... Playing with the fans here will be an absolutely different proposition next year. Did you spend some time at the Leeds training ground not long ago? Yeah. How, what, what was the atmosphere like the day you were there? Well, the one, one of the main things that come out, other than how much did, yeah, and um, the cameras un unknowingly came in behind and he said, right, thank you, I'm off. Well, really? <laughs> I love that.